the South African National Taxi Council, together with the local airline, Airlink, supermarket uh, chain ShopRite, and global law firm Herbert Smith have joined forces to provide vital relief, supplies, and support in cleaning up Peter Marisburg after the looting and civil unrest that has devastated the city and surrounding communities over the past week. Let's bring in Mark Iketa Motlabe. He's live for us in Peter Marisburg. I hope you can hear us. Brother Motlabe, good to have you back on to the program. So, before we get to what you're currently doing there, you had this conversation with uh, the minister, Natim Tetwa, earlier on. Tough conversation to have. Um, give us your sense of how did that, you know, give us a sense of, remind us what question you posed to him and how the answer came across. Yeah, um, uh, Blaine, I, I can tell you that uh, before he actually agreed to stand in front of the camera uh, to speak to us, he kept on saying that, oh, no, you're not ready, you're not ready, uh, I want to go, I want to go. And, uh, but he eventually spoke to us, uh, first of all, yes, reflecting on you know, the importance of this day and uh, this initiative where people are actually seen in long queues getting uh, the, you know, food parcels. But I can tell you that uh, later uh, then we pose a question. I mean, there have been critics really um, saying that, uh, I mean, it looks like politicians only show up when the dust has settled. And he says that no, but obviously law enforcement officers were on the ground. Well, I suppose that means what was, was there any need for you know leaders to be on the ground when the the smoke was still billowing over KZN or even in Houten as well. But then it, it looks like he he was anchored by that question. And uh, yes, uh, we will ask questions, Blaine, uh, whether we are told that we don't know what we are talking about. But we will have to ask those questions. Yeah. Definitely, indeed, to get the answers, we need to ask the pertinent questions, no matter how difficult or uncomfortable uh, it is. Uh, tell us uh, about where you are now, and I guess it's been a day of goodwill, isn't it? It's, it's Mandela Day today, uh, and you would expect that, but I guess this needs to go beyond today in order to get to a better place. Tell us more. Yeah, uh, Blaine, I mean, earlier on, I'm sure you saw us, we were in uh, uh, North Dale where uh, some of the residents were actually uh, getting uh, food parcels. But I can tell you that we left that area now. We are at Emuseni Old Age, and this is where uh, some of our elderly citizens, um, you know, are, are, are living. And, uh, but I can tell you that when we left uh, North Dale, we saw disappointment disappointed faces and this is simply because remember in that area uh, the targeted families were I think about 450 but many others went back home empty-handed devastated but I, I just want to bring in uh, Erling CEO Roger talk to us about this we left people there empty-handed I spoke to you on the taxi um, uh, when we were coming to this area it must be also devastating for you as well, considering that, um, I mean, the demand seems to be uh, more than the supply here. Uh, that's exactly right. And, you know, it is Nelson Mandela Day after all. And we're all here to be united uh, with society. And this is what we're trying to do to give a little bit back. And uh, the devastation was seeing hundreds of thousands of people standing in queues. And, you know, the, the 2,000 food parcels we brought down even in conjunction with all of the great efforts that have been done by so many other people that have given and the gift of the givers in their job of distributing, what I've realized today is that this is far too little. Uh, and the other aspect is that, you know, today we have distributed 2,000 food parcels, but in the next few days we're going to need to distribute more. So uh, what we're doing as, as a private sector initiative, this needs to be augmented by a much greater initiative to avoid a humanitarian disaster in Peter Maritzburg. I saw some of the people that I spoke to there uh, who were then forced to go back home empty-handed. Yeah. They had some food vouchers, um, uh, some papers written food vouchers. Um, what, what does that mean? Uh, does it mean that they will be able to go to some of the uh, shops here and get food? 
So what, what we've done in order to uh, distribute the food hampers is we work together with, with Sintaco and uh, with the municipality and everybody who presents an official voucher is entitled to one of those uh, food hampers. And it seems that um, the number of vouchers that were in, in issue could have been greater than the number of food hampers that we had allocated to that particular distribution site. We're not altogether sure. We didn't see the vouchers that people have spoken about. The vouchers that we referred to are not a handwritten voucher. It's an official, it's like a ticket uh, that has been distributed by Sintaco to the communities that have most uh, mostly needed um, the distribution of the uh, relief hampers that, that we have brought down. So yes, the great disappointment is that we haven't been able to satisfy everybody but it has brought about the realization that this is much bigger than this initiative that has been led by Airlink and comprises Santaku and the municipality of uh, Msunduzi as well as uh, Herbert Sp Smith Freehills, the legal practice. Uh, this is not enough. This needs much, much, much more effort to assist those that are in need. And some of those that are in need are our elderly citizens who are here uh, I saw them sitting, many of them on wheelchairs, of course, considering their age. You are the manager here, uh, Medlamini, at Emuseni, uh, Emuseni um, a Center for, for, the, for the Old Age. Yes. Talk to us, how has the whole looting and the whole violence affected this old age here, perhaps in terms of food security? Oh, they never came to our home. Uh, yet, though we were so frightened, but they never came here. Yeah, though we were short of uh, food like bread, I was going up and down as far as Hayfield looking for bread. Some of the shops they were closed, but they never uh, harm us. Yes, which is a good thing though. But uh, the food security issue, having to travel that long to get bread uh, for our elderly citizens here, it must be quite devastating for you as well. Yes, because you know some of them they are sick, they they are diabetes militas, or they were hungry. Uh, I was going as far as Hayfield, only the most of the shops there like a spa. It was closed. Uh, then I went up to Hayfield, where is um, uh, Pick and Pay. It was closed. Then I came back without any bread for our residents. So fortunately, there was a van which was um, uh, selling uh, uh, bread there by the police station places. Lay. So I stopped the car. Then I bought uh, uh, 60 loaf of bread. Yes. Thanks so much uh, for the efforts you are actually giving uh, to make sure that our elderly citizens are sustained. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, the manager here at Emiseni, uh, please, for the old um, uh, people. Um, and I can tell you that uh, Blaine, I mean, it's quite devastating. We, we saw those, uh, you know, um, looting and... Um, <sighs> events, looting events taking place here in this area uh, in as much as the old age was untouched but the elderly citizens were touched of course indirectly but when it comes to food security as you heard from the manager she had to actually rove around the area in an attempt to get them food she struggled but finally finding somebody along the road selling bread um, uh, and then she finally bought it but then obviously this relief today uh, coming in handy to actually um, help our elderly citizens um, to keep fit yeah. and to actually go to bed of course with food um, and uh, but just th that's just one of the um, impacts that we've actually seen uh, throughout the violence in the area, including Houtin as well. Yeah. No, it's, it's important stories to bring to the fore. Why? It's because it gives us hope, isn't it, as citizens who are watching this? Because there are people out there who are going the extra mile to get us to that better place where we need to be. And we thank you very much indeed, Mark Ketla, uh, for bringing us this story. Mark Ketla, mm -hmm. Life.